You have your nine by 12 canvas. Yes. Do you want me to go ahead and start, Wendy? I think we're ready. Is everybody here ready? Okay. okay. Yes, I'm sure everybody who's on Zoom okay. has been so ready. For if you wanted to, you tape the taped a little around the edges to give it a little mat when you're finished. And then if you take a pencil and draw a horizontal line about two thirds of the way down. So look and see where halfway would be and go just a little below halfway and draw yourself a horizontal line. This is where the water will meet the will meet the trees, the land. Oh. And I'm gonna switch cameras now to my painting canvas. So I will see you at the end. Um, remember that if you have questions to type them into the chat and Wendy will will um, bring them up. I'll try to answer them if she if she lets me know what they are. So tonight there was a, an instruction sheet like we always have, but I just wanted to draw attention to our focus tonight is going to be on direction, contrast and texture. This is the teacher in me coming out. <laughs> So this is what we'll be focusing on. This is what we're going to learn through this painting is direction, contrast, and focus. And another thing we're going to learn has to do with colors. So many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the color wheel. And three colors on the color wheel that are next to each other are called analogous colors. And tonight we're stretching that just a little bit because we're actually going from green, yellow, yellow, orange, orange, and then our neutral brown. So our, our colors are all gonna be from this area in the color wheel. And those of you that picked up a kit, you have a light yellow, um, medium dark yellow, an orange, an olive green, and what we call burnt umber, which umber is a earth, earth mineral and it's roasted, which gives um, burnt umber a warm coloring. So burnt umber has, is going to have a bit of a reddish tint, tint to it or a warm color like these ones are. So I'm gonna do something a little different than usual. We're gonna start off with those of you that have a kit taking your paint, scooping it with your palette knife and preparing your palette with your paint. So you'll have yellow. Remember when we're using a palette knife, you wanna wipe it off in between so you don't mix colors right away. So you're just using a palette knife like a little spoon to scoop up some of your colors. If those of you that are doing this virtually at home and just squirt out these colors on your on your palette. Lori, are you doing a landscape or portrait? Um, it is portrait. Okay. If we do it, if we, if, because our canvas is nine by 12, if we do it landscape, you don't really get such a feeling of the trees and the reflection in the water. They're kind of squished. If okay. you were, if you were painting it on a much larger canvas, you probably could do that. Okay. I, I've told you before that I love this um, Asian man that does YouTube videos called Wow Art. I've never seen a picture of him, but uh, he actually originally painted this on a 12 by 12 square. So I'm just preparing my palette here by scooping out my colors and getting them onto my uh, palette, my plate. So this is the five colors we're using tonight, plus a little white and a little black. Okay, so I have my I have my palette made. Lori, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I just wanted to jump in. Anybody who has our kits or is in person here, the black that I put in here is a very liquid black. Um, and it's pretty permanent because that's easier to do the long, thin strokes with the thinner black. But um, I just wanted everybody to know that before they start popping that open because it's a yeah. lot more liquidy than the rest of the paint that we have and didn't want people just, you know, spilling it all over because it is not heavy bodied at all. 
So I, you notice I don't have any white on my palette. We're gonna wait to add white. We're, we're just working with our fall colors here. Our, our light yellow, medium, dark yellow, orange, green, olive green, and burnt umber. And then before we get going any farther, we're also going to do a little mixing here. We want to create a light green, a lime colored green. So we're gonna take some of this light yellow, put it in a second little spot here. Pick up a little bit of your, of your olive green. Just use your palette knife to, to go ahead and mix it. You can scrape it with the palette knife, scoop it in, mix it. And you want it to be a light, a light green. So I need a little bit more yellow here. So I'm mixing up a light olive green here by mixing it with yellow. That looks pretty good. Always wipe off your palette knife in between. So if I hold this up, can you see the kind of light lime green color you have? We'll be using that in a couple of places. So we want to mix up a little gob of it. Okay. We don't have medium yellow, just, or we don't have dark yellow, just the medium. How do you suggest I do a, a darker? For, like for the dark yellow. Probably add a little orange to it. I will do that. You can try you can try using a little orange or a touch of the brown with it when we get to that. Okay. Okay, so those of you that have the instruction sheet, you see this little picture here with the little globs on it? We're gonna be working on the trees first. So go ahead and I'm gonna be scooping up just like I scoop paint and put on my palette. I'm gonna scoop from my palette now and put it on my canvas, okay? So I'm gonna start a little bit low on the horizon and I'm gonna add the lime green that I mixed up. Okay, wipe my palette knife. And now I'm going to pick up the light yellow and with the light yellow, I'm gonna add like maybe four or five little globs of yellow. And I'm working up to the top of my canvas by getting a little darker. So here's my darker yellow. Picking up my orange, just getting this in an area on my canvas. Last, I'm gonna pick up a little of the burnt umber, just adding two little blobs of burnt umber to the outer corners. Okay, so it just looks like a dot painting right now. We got our light, lime greens, lighter yellows, darker yellows, orange, and burnt umbers. And then using our palette knife, using the bottom of the palette knife here. So see, I have it, I'm holding it in my hand like this. And my index finger is pressing on my palette knife. That's adding, that's adding pressure. See how I can bend it. So I'm gonna just start down here with my greens. And I'm just gonna start spreading them around on my, on my board. Now, if you look at the finished painting, you'll see the lightness and the white, the light coming through the trees is in the middle there. So I'm keeping that. And then I, I'm not going to clean off my palette knife. I'm gonna keep the green on there and I'm just gonna start working my way up here. And it is okay if you have white canvas showing through. Don't be trying to paint with your palette knife. You're not trying 
to cover everything with your palette knife. Okay, now I'm going up to my oranges, mixing them in a little bit. Bringing in my burnt umbers on the corners. And if you find that you just don't have enough paint on your canvas, go ahead and grab some with your palette knife over in your, in your palette. So our darkest part of the painting is going to be our outer corners. Now, if things start getting on the bottom of your palette knife, blended too much, you need to wipe it off. And you do, even though you want some of your canvas to show through, I need a little more light green here down to the bottom. This is really a fun painting. I love doing this. Okay, so there we have, we've put our colors on our canvas with our palette knife. We blended them roughly with our palette knife. Okay, and now we are going to bring out our secret weapon that's going to add our texture tonight to our leaves. So those of you doing it online, the instruction sheet, sheet said a few pieces of tin foil, just like four or five inches. Those of you that have kits, you have your tin foil. You're just gonna crunch it, where am I? Crunch it up in a ball. Okay, so you have a little ball of tin foil, and now you're going to pounce it on your painting. And you're going to just keep pouncing it. It's going to kind of blend, but this is going to add your texturized leaves. So you're just pouncing it up and down, up and down. Okay, if you leave some of the canvas showing, don't feel like you need to completely cover all of the canvas. So if I bring this up, you can see the texture that's coming there for the leaves. And if you feel like it's getting a little too mixed on your tin foil, that's why you have another piece. You can get a new a new little ball of tin foil and and if you feel like you don't have enough paint on your canvas, go ahead and pick some up with your palette knife and just add it on there. It's okay if it pokes up a little bit, you know, this is the this is the texture that you're making. I'm gonna, my tin foil has a lot of the light and the, the light green and the light yellow on it. So I'm gonna set this one aside and get another piece. Roll it up into a little ball and bring it up here in my, towards the top. This is blending in more with my oranges. You should see that the burnt umber has a reddish, reddish warm brown tint to it. And you just decide when you think you have ha you have enough of your texture, enough of your, your paint is blended. Wendy, how's everybody doing in the library? How are they doing? We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Bouncing away. Okay. So once you have your um, 
Let's see here. Uh, if you're following the instruction sheet, we're at number three, where we created our texture. So this is the part, when, once you have this done, or you, you feel like it's kind of blended, you, the way you can tell to blend it is to hold it away at arm's reach, squint your eyes so all you can see is value. So if you squint your eyes at it, do you see a lighter area in the center near the horizon where the colors are getting a little darker till they come up to the top? Once they are, we need to dry our painting. So acrylic paint dries really fast. So those of you, you can wave your painting like this to get it dry. Um, if you had brought a hair dryer, it'll dry within a few seconds on the hair dryer. So hit it with the hair dryer. No hair dryers at the library. So you'll have to give us a minute. So we get our get your leaves dry. Well, these are actually background leaves. We're gonna put in the foreground leaves next, that, but we need the painting to be a little bit dry. So how's everybody doing? I can't, can't see your picture on the computer. I can't ask you to give me a thumbs up if you're doing okay. <laughs> My Green is a little too stark right here. I want to get a little bit more yellow mixed in it a little bit. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a little more of my paint to my palette. And also I'm going to mix up a little bit more of the light green. Actually, I'll wait and do that late. That. Don't worry about that right now. We will need a little more light green when we get down to the water, but we can, we don't want our paint to dry before we get there. So on step four on the instructions, we're going to be adding straight color with our palette knife to our painting here. And it should be a, just slightly, I mean, it can be a slight little dampness when you touch it with your finger, but we want it to be a little bit, a little bit dry. So I'm going to, I'm not using any, I'm not mixing colors. I'm just taking my palette knife. Here's the top of it. Here's the bottom of it. And on the tip of it, I'm picking up some yellow. And I'm going to go back to my painting here. So light comes towards you, dark moves away from you. So we want to create that, the leaves that are coming out towards you, that are going to be closer to you looking at them. 
So we're going to be putting in some light leaves on top of this leaf texture that we made here. I'm just going to go back with my and I'm just kind of tapping it. I'm just tapping my if I hold it up here more. to give myself some light on the top of it. And we go through my whole my whole leaf area here. I'm the little bit of lighter yellow. We got great texture with the foil. Now we're gonna come back and add just with the tip of our palette knife, Remember, you're using your index finger as your pressure to, to push your palette knife down onto your canvas. Add a few little light ones down here in the green area. We've had a great fall. In fact, I spend all day Monday with my dad and my sister. Uh, mulching and bagging up all of our maple leaves and stuff that we have here on the place. We use them for uh, the bags go over all the, our important water faucets outside to protect them from freezing during the winter. So, and then we use them for mulch in the garden. So I've gone through and I've added some light colored with my lightest yellow. I can also do the same by adding some medium yellow, varying the, varying the leaves. Come back with some orange. I'm, I'm wiping my palette knife each time so that the only color on the bottom of my palette knife is the color that I've just picked up. I think this painting has a very calm, comfortable uh, feeling to it. Um, one of the reasons that it does is that, of course, the color choice that we're using, which is what nature uses, these beautiful fall colors, kind of help us to slow down, get ready for winter. Um, but it also adds movement to our painting because of the texture. When we come in here now to start doing our trunks, we're going to start adding a little more, going to calm down the wind blowing in the trees and bring in some uh, vertical lines that are going to add some calmness to our painting. So is everybody good with their leaf background? You can see I have some leaves on the outside. We're a little behind at the library, so give us a few minutes to get some leaves in, because none of we didn't have uh, hair dryers, so some of us yeah, just barely got dry to enough to start leaves. coming back. Yeah, yeah, they That's were waving, okay. but now they're now they're just barely starting to add their leaves in. So give us okay. a minute. Okay, and you can just take your time. We're not in in a rush. Um, I will I will add some more too while I'm while we're just thinking about it. So we know that the ones that are at the library evidently live somewhere around in Utah County, right, Wendy? Is anybody at the library that's not from American Fork? Oh, we have one Saratoga Springs here. I guess that's still Utah County, but not AF. Yeah. And you got a helper on your lap. I do. Is that she too? <laughs> One of our patrons was trying to paint with her, and I was like, um, ah, yeah, <laughs> I'll help. For very moving leaves. I will sacrifice <laughs> and snuggle a baby. <laughs> what about what about our friends that are on uh, that are doing this virtually? Where where is everybody at? Can you unmute and tell Wendy or tell us or 
I know my friend Teresa is from down in Phoenix. Are they saying where they're from? Vineyard. You just put that in the chat. So Vineyard in Saratoga. That might be as far away as we've got tonight. I thought I saw. Let's see. Look at the participants. Oh, I should look on the other computer instead of the one that people are trying to look at. Um, let's see. I don't know if that's Bonnie Pewterball or Bonnie Pewterball or a different Bonnie, but I see a Bonnie yeah. on the list. If, if that's Bonnie Pewterball, she's in Florida, but she, I think she just barely came in. So she's probably madly trying to catch up if it is her. <laughs> I see, I see Melinda Lau is on. She's a, a learning center Hi, mom. Ben. Kids have yes. come to the learning center for years. Fun. <laughs> They might have a pretty local group tonight. That's awesome. It's a lot different from Tasmania, which we had a couple of paint nights ago. <laughs> That's all right. We'll love the local group too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're just we're just going through here, and we're just using our palette knife to the tip of our palette knife to tap on some more prominent leaves that would be in the foreground of the trees before we go in to add our trunks. And again, if you hold your painting, this is quite an impressionistic painting. It means that your eyes will do the blending. You're not blending with the paintbrush and painting every value that you see, your eyes will visually blend. So if you take your painting and hold it out at arm's reach, squint your eyes so you just see value and you should see a really nice mix and value change from the, the light green, some of the sky showing through here to the yellow, to the orange, for the canopy of the trees. Okay, are we ready to start our trunks? Now, for those of you that got kits from the library, Wendy mentioned earlier that the black that's in your kit is a very liquidy black. Um, you can uncap it. We're not gonna put, I can set it here on my palette, but I'm not gonna dump it out on my palette, okay? I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to, let me see if I can do it. Have a little cup with some water in it here. I'm gonna wet my liner brush. Um, if you'd like to use your liner or you have a, uh, like a quarter inch, half inch, angle flat brush. brush. Yeah. Angle, angle brush, brush. yeah. Angle brush is good for doing the trunks. But go ahead and get a little water in your brush first and then, let me see if I can do this. Water my brush, tap it off, and then I just gently rub my brush on the edge of the water cup just to remove some of that extra water. Then I'm gonna pull out my burnt umber and I'm gonna add a little black in it, just a little bit. The black is very overpowering. The brown is a neutral color. The black is very overpowering. So I just want to, my burnt umber on my painting has a nice warm red feel to it. I'm gonna have my trunks be a little darker. So that's why I'm adding the black. So in my, pa in my palette, 
I have burnt umber with a little black, water that was in my brush. I'm just going to wipe it off a little bit on my palette. And then we have to get our leaves dry. You have to fan them or something here. If you have a blow dryer, hit them with the blow dryer. We don't want the leaves to blend in with the brown when we add our trunk. tell how you're doing those of you that are doing it online Wendy how how's everybody at the library I'm almost thinking that we're going to change I'm going to change the order we're doing things in here I think we'll hold off on the trunks we'll let our leaves dry and we won't do our trunks and our branches just yet because we want our paint to be dry when we do that so let's let's set that the trunk part aside for right now. And let's go down here and start working on the bottom third of our painting, our water. So in order to do that, we're gonna go back to um, our light yellow and our green and mix on your palette, mix on your palette a little bit of uh, some more of that light lime green. So I have here my lightest yellow and I'm going to add in some of the green. The green is pretty powerful so you don't need very much of it. And I'm using my palette knife so I'm scraping it and mixing it. Okay. Oh, smart. Somebody got smart and went into the bathroom to use the hand dryer. There you go. To dry there. <laughs> well, I think if we I think if we hold off on the trunks and we go to It'll our water by the time we get done with our water, our will be dry and we can put our trunks and our branches in then too. Smart. Yeah, good idea. So like how we started on the instruction sheet here on the back, this picture right here shows the beginning of our water. So here in the water, we are reflecting the tree and we're reflecting the values of the tree. So I'm going to start off, this is where we're going to use our white. So I'm going to start off, my white is in a little cup like this. If I had it in a tube, I'd just use it straight from the tube. But I'm going to put white right in the middle, close to my horizon line. Probably can't see it very good there, but I got white there. Let me see if I go like this. There, see, we're mad. Yeah, we can see it. There's my, blob, there's my blob of white in the middle. Now this is why I had to mix up some of the lime green because I'd used up what I had. So now I'm gonna come in with my green and I'm gonna put some green on each side of my white. I mean, look at the look at the colors you have up here in the trees. 
So then I'm going to, I'm just kind of reversing everything. I'm going to my light yellow, add some light yellow over here. Just to get some paint in, in kind of the right area. I'm wiping my palette knife each time I go back to my palette. I'm gonna pick up some of the orange with the, like a little shovel on my palette. So here's the bottom of my palette. It doesn't have paint on it. This time I have it on the top and I'm adding my orange. And here's my burnt umber kind of up here in the canopy of the trees. I'm gonna come in here with my palette knife, open up a little burnt umber to add over here on the edge. Okay, so I've set my paints up for my water. Remember our focus was on, one of our focuses, emphasis tonight was on direction. So when we were using our tin foil up here, we were just pouncing and making no, no, um, no directional lines on it. This will make the leaves look like they're ruffling in the breeze. But down here in the water, we want it to be smooth. We want a different kind of feel here. This is the water is contrasting. So once I have my colors on there, I'm going to use my one inch brush and I need it to be dry. So don't, don't dip it in the water. If you already have, make sure you wipe it off with a paper towel. And now I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to do vertical strokes. And I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna come down with vertical strokes. Moving out to the side. So I come in here with my white. And then I'm coming out and picking up my light green. But I'm keeping the center part the lightest. Okay, and I want to bring that all the way down, all the way down to the bottom of my. I've got mine taped, so I'm making sure I go all the way to the bottom. And see how that's blended? So rather than clean my brush, I'm just going to wipe my brush with a dry paper towel and continue moving out to the edge. So there's my colors, how they're mixing, reflecting the colors that I have above in the tree. So I wanna do the other side. So I'm gonna take my brush that I've been using and I'm gonna wipe it with a paper towel. Go back to my green and pick up the yellow and move off. For me, I'm moving off to the left side of my canvas. Doesn't matter if you started with your left or your right. Okay, so I've just I blended those colors. Again, I'm not washing my brush in water. I'm, I'm cleaning it with a dry paper towel. And when I look at my painting, I see too many stripes and I want it to be blended really smoothly. 
So over here, I'm going to pick up a little more of my um, light yellow or my light my light green, my light yellow on the end of my brush. And I'm going to bring some of that, more of that green in. I like to, I squint my eyes a lot, <laughs> not only because I wear glasses and I'm usually pretty blind, but I squint my eyes to see what the value is doing. Is it, is it blending, is the value blending across the water there? And you just want to make sure to try to keep the center part light. This will draw the viewer's focus, the eyes, into this center part, which is going to be where the water meets the land, where the light's shining through some of the leaves on the trees and hitting the water. So you can always add a little more color in here if you want. I find it easiest when I'm doing this kind of painting to hold my brush more so this would be how I'd hold a pencil. I hold it more vertical. So it's more up and down and a little looser in my hand. So I can just drag the top of the fibers of the brush across the painting. If I put a little white on the end of my brush, I come in here to the center and I'm just lightly kind of flicking my paint but I am holding my brush very loose in my hand not not tight grip on it hold your brush so it's more how can I show you so it's more vertical not like not like a paint brush more up and down so it's perpendicular to the table and just very light strokes and our brush is pretty dry so it should just blend it pretty good out there Except when you get a, dang it, a bristle hair. So I feel like I am satisfied with my blended water. I feel like it does reflect my colors from the trees, where the light's coming through the middle, the white is down here. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. So I'm going to take my brush here and put it in my water, which is muddy water now, and just let it sit there for tonight because we're done with we're done with that brush. So because we used a, a dry brush and we blended this, our paint is much thinner than it was up above. So like I can, I can touch it with my little finger and it's already dry. So we are on to, we actually can take um, with your, a liner brush if you'd like. Mix some of your, oh my gosh. Just a sec. My black paint spilled on the table. Hold on a minute. <laughs> well, that's good because we needed for you to slow down a little bit here anyway. <laughs> okay. You know, all the years that I was teaching school, they said, don't be afraid of the silence. You know, if you ask a question, just don't be afraid if it's quiet for a long, you know, while the kids think. So we'll just be quiet. I'm going to cap my black because I don't want to lose any more of it here.
So I'm just practicing on my palette here. I want to get a kind of a dark of my light. I'm using my light green, my yellow, and a tad of the burnt umber. And a little tiny bit of white. It's going to give me a very muted greenish brown. And this is what I'm going to use to give myself those bushes at the horizon line or the where the trees meet the water. She said the, the light green that you made, if you have any left, a little yellow, and then a, a little bit of burnt umber, and then a little bit of white. Just a tad of white. So can you see the difference? Here was my here was my original olive green. Here is my light chartreuse colored green here where I mixed it with yellow. Now I've taken this chartreuse green, mixed it with a touch of the burnt umber and a tiny bit of white. And you see this pale, pale brownish green, green that I get? So this color is going to be my horizon line. So I'm going to come in here and make a, you can turn your painting sideways, make a straight line across my painting. Even though our world is round and everything is curved, wherever there's an edge of water, it's always a straight line. <laughs> So I've come in there with my, my, pa my pale greenish brown and I just uh, straightened up my horizon line a little bit. Hmm. I'm getting so much paint on my hands, it's, I'm touching my painting with it. Ah! Okay, if anybody has any questions, please put them in the chat. We do our best with this virtual. Line just to make the horizon line a little bit. Yeah, we're, we're just barely getting horizon line bush color mixed up here, so. Okay, just. and don't need to be, I mean, you want to try to make it straight but we have a very straight tool that we're gonna use, our palette knife. And we're gonna come in there and cut in that very distinct water edge line. So, yeah, so it doesn't have to be a perfect line right now. No, just so kind of you're not using a ruler or anything, you know, you're just blending your leaf color where it's gonna be closest to the water. And you used a little bit darker green for that, right, Lori? For the, this? Yeah. Yes. yes, here's here's my palette. So you can so you can see yours. Here is the original green. Right. Here's the here's the chartreuse green, the green mixed with the light yellow. Here is the here is the 
green mixed with the burnt umber. And then I the touch just a corner of my brush of white to give it a little bit lighter. Okay. Now we're just patting that along, using the palette knife to pat that along the horizon. No, lines. you're using you're using your blending a little oh, brush. A little brush. Okay. Uh huh. Paint that on there. We're gonna come back next with our palette light knife. Okay. How are you doing? Everybody got their horizon? I swear I go through like a half a roll of paper towels when I paint. <laughs> Usually yeah, I hang, that, hang a bag on the chair next to me and just keep pulling them off. <laughs> that's why I was gone. I had to go get some more. Okay. <laughs> I had to go get some more paper towels. <laughs> yep. So to get ready to do our reflections, our highlights in the water and stuff, I'm going to take my white and I'm gonna put some of it on my palette so that I can set my uh, knife in it. Oh, you can't see it very well, but I have a little blob of white here now on my palette. Those of you that are have your horizon painted on there, go back and see how your leaves are doing up above. Even my big globby ones are are are. If I don't press hard, they're still they're pretty dry. Now, because we uh, waited to paint our trunks up here to let their leaves dry, we can't go forward on our water until we have added the reflection of our trunks to the water. You have instruction sheets. You see how the reflection of the trunks comes down into the water. The highlight on our water is going to be on top of the trunks. So we can't put our highlight in the water, our little ripples or our leaves floating on the water until we've added our trunks. So we're going to go back to our burnt umber, which mine pretty much has dried up. So I'm going to add a little more burnt umber from my pot my pot of paint, or if I was had a tube, I would squirt a little more out, just depending on how much you put on there. It, acrylic paint dries fast, so it might not be wet enough for you to use. So from my kit, I'm opening up my liquid black again. Get my brush just a little bit wet. Got my brush wet, tap it off. Wipe it on each side, dip it in my black, mix it with my burnt umber. Move your black far away from you so you don't spill. <laughs> and I'm just spreading this out on my palette because I don't want it to be globby on my brush. I want it, I can even scrape it a little on the side of my palette. So I have this on my angled brush and I'm gonna add my trunks. Pretty much your water is dry. Just be careful. I have gotten a lot of paint on my hands, so I have to be careful that it's not wet. The largest trunks on your tree are going to be the ones that are on the outer edge. Those are the ones that are closest to the viewer. They're closest to the water's edge. So I'm gonna put my brush down. That's the horizon side. I'm going to push my brush, which is gonna make it thick. And you can't see all of my trunks. So it's going to kind of break through the trees as it goes up as it goes through the leaves. So 
So it'll look as though some of the leaves are in front of my trunk. And I'm going to just go back to my liquidy color. If you feel like it's not flowing well enough, dab your brush in your water again and tap it off. So on this outer edge, I'm going to add some thicker trunk lines. On both sides. The thickness of the trunk or the thickness of these branches here is going to depend on the pressure of your brush. So the, the more you press, the thicker the lines are going to be. And even though I have a horizon line here that's horizontal, I want to give the illusion that the trees are going back. There's going to be depth in my trees. And the way that I do that is I add a little bit of perspective. And that is even things that are at the same level here horizontally, the thinner ones are going to look like they are farther back. You can see this is why we wanted um, our leaves to be dry because we don't want our leaves blending with our trunks. So this is where the Bob Ross comes in, you know. What kind of tree is in your world? Oh, there's a little tree over here. Look at, look at this little tree. <laughs> We're just adding with our burnt umber and our black and water so that it's a little more ink-like. Coming through here and I'm adding some trunks and some branches. The branches, of course, are gonna be thinner than the trunks. The trunks that are farther away are gonna be a little lighter colored maybe. So you just put in as many trunks. I'm using the edge of my uh, angled brush to add these. Now remember I said vertical lines will give the viewer a, a more stable, a more calm appearance. Our leaves were very texturized and are fluffing around. Our trees now are gonna add some, our trunks here are gonna add some stability to our picture, some ground, we're gonna ground the picture. And the more I use my brush, the lighter the color actually becomes on it. So I can put in smaller ones here in the background. And you can take these trunks all the way across your horizon line and be like you're looking into a grove of trees. These beautiful fall trees that have added the such beautiful color here. I'm going to switch brushes now and I'm going to switch to my uh, liner brush. This is the smallest bristle brush I have. So it's got a very, very small, just a few hairs. This one is actually a number four. That's a little liner brush. I'm going to use the same thing. I'm going to dip my in the water, dip my brush. Tap it off, wipe it on the edge so the surplus water is off, and come down here, pick up some of my burnt umber with my black, 
and using my, not holding my brush like a pencil, but tipping, pulling the tip down so it's more perpendicular to my uh, canvas. I'm gonna come in here through this canopy of leaves now and add thin little branches. And when you get, when your paint starts running out and it gets lighter, do the ones that are in the middle. It's where you think a branch might be poking out of your leaves. I like to um, wet my brush each time before I pick up my paint, just so it is more of an ink, kind of more like ink. I know it's hard for you to see because I'm holding my brush perpendicular to my canvas and adding these thin little branches in here. You decide how much, how many branches you want showing through your through your grove of trees. The thinner your, the thinner your uh, branch is, you create that by having less pressure, just the very tip of your brush is touching your canvas. Some of my trunks I didn't get all the way to the horizon line. So I'm bringing my trunks down with my liner brush to my horizon. I have a book that my, uh, my daughters gave me one year for Christmas, a number of years ago. It's written by the artist Thomas Kincaid. You're probably familiar with his artwork. Anyway, it says, uh, the title of the book is The Art of Creative Living. Just a minute, I'm gonna see what the title is. The camera that's looking at the finished picture is actually my cell phone. And of course, as cell phones do, they run out of battery. Well, I hope that, I hope that'll give you an idea. <laughs> anyway, this book by Thomas Kincaid called The Art of Creative Living, he talks in there about how important it is <clears throat> to create something each day. And whether it be, you know, a painting or you're making a recipe, or you're creating a new way of doing something, you know, uh, creating, you know, a writing, you're, you're writing something creative, you know, putting your feelings down on paper or in a painting. And he was saying how important that is. And they found that that helps a lot with people who suffer from depression and anxiety, that if they, find something each day to do where there is a, it's a creative outlet that it's very uh, helpful for them.
So we're going to, now that we have our trunks and our branches up here in the top part of our tree, of our painting, we're gonna add the reflections down here and then we're almost, almost done. So I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna do it with my liner brush, tap it, put it, put it in my water, tap it off, wipe it on the edge, come back to my burnt umber. Um, for the trunks on your, in your water, you want them to be burnt umber. Um, they're reflections, so they are not gonna have the black in them. But you're gonna come in here with your brush and you're kind of gonna squiggle it. You know, it's not gonna be real, real solid straight. These are reflections. So I'm pushing down harder on my brush at the top to make it wider and then just kind of dragging out my reflections and I'm going to each one of my trees that are along the horizon and I'm adding these reflections into the water. Again, putting my brush in water, tapping it out, bringing only burnt umber into this mix and adding it here. Uh, the, your reflections themselves will get lighter when they're in the light part of your painting, in the white part of your painting there in the center. Um, just like your trunks up above do, they get a little darker when they come to the outer edge. And I'm just reflecting each one of the trunks above. Remember we were working on direction Here's my direction. So I've gone along here. My longer trunks are gonna have a longer reflection down into the water. My darker, darker trunks are gonna have a little bit darker reflection in the water. So I've gone along here on the water and I've added reflection. I have to turn this sideways so you can see my reflection of each trunk. We have only about two steps left. I know we're, we've hit 8.30 and I hope if, that you'll stay with us till the end here. Doing? Good. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the, with my palette knife, a little bit of the light yellow, and I'm going to mix some white in with it. Here's my palette knife. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick up this light yellow that I mixed on the edge of my palette knife, on the back side of my palette knife. Here's the top of my palette knife. Here's the back side. See where the light yellow is? And I'm gonna use that edge right along my horizon. It's uh, the lighter yellow mixed with white. So, so it's here's the light yellow. So I used my lightest yellow and mixed it with some white. Um, here's the top of my palette knife. Here's the underside of my palette knife. See how I picked it up on my on the edge? There's nothing on the top. I picked it up just on the edge. So then I could come in here and lay that paint down and just kind of skip across that horizon line. Okay. 
Um, next, I'm going to just wipe my palette knife off. I'm just picking up white. So here's my palette knife, top of my palette knife. I'm going to slide my palette knife through the white. Here's the bottom of my palette knife. See how you can see the white on the edge? Nothing on the top. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to create those horizontal highlights of water. And I'm going to go right across my trunk reflections with that. And I'm just going to kind of skip and cut them, cut them in here. So see how I have, I have put white, just like, a, just like a knife, like I'm frosting. Nothing's on the top of my palette knife. My white is right on the edge. And then I come in here with my horizontal skips and I'm making horizontal highlights across the water. You can carry them all the way down to the bottom of the painting if you like. The bottom of the painting, of course, is going to be the very foreground. This is the, like, as I, if I was standing here looking at the picture, this is where I would be standing. And once you have the white highlights in there, then we're going to create our little loose floating fall leaves. So to create the effect, that will look like some of these leaves up here that are being tossed by the breeze, by the wind, have fallen off and are floating on top of the water down here. I'm gonna use, again, my palette knife clean, but I'm gonna use the very tip of it. And I'm gonna come back to my pure color. So I just have a little of my light yellow on the tip. And I'm just going to make some little spots, just like their leaves floating on top of the water. Tiny, tiny little bits. And always when you're looking at it straight on, you think, oh, that doesn't look good, or I, I didn't put that in the right place. But I can guarantee you that tomorrow morning when you wake up and you look at this across the room, you are going to say, I can't believe I painted that. <laughs> it's very empowering to look at your artwork from a distance. <laughs> a distance of time and space. Yeah, the just, room take a, the just take a break from it. So after you've added a few yellow leaves, a few, few little yellow leaves floating on top of the water. You can go back and add maybe, the orange is pretty, pretty bright. You can mix it with maybe some of the darker yellow, get a little muted orange leaf. And I'm just going back and I'm just, Tap in the tip of my palette knife here. So how's everybody doing? Getting done? So there I have just a few little colored leaves floating on top of the water. So at the end of our painting, we take a moment to appreciate the time that we got to spend together, that we have this wonderful technology that connect, can connect us over the 
hundreds of miles. And we are thankful we could do this together tonight. And then somewhere on your palette, pick a color that'll show a, the green or the um, burnt umber and own your artwork. Put your signature on it. Make sure you're above, if you taped it, make sure you're above your tape line. I am so thankful to have been able to join you guys again tonight. And if you taped it, this is your aha moment. As easy as the tape was to put on, it is not that easy to take off. <laughs> but when you when you peel this tape off, it gives you a very comforting feeling because it 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 uh, makes your painting look like it's got like it's on a little uh, mat board, like a little frame. We peel it off. I really do like using the painter's tape to do this. I use masking tape and masking tape, you know, has a little bit more of a stickiness to it. But see how nice it looks when it gives it that nice, clean, straight edge on it. Does anybody have any questions? You can type them in or unmute yourself and ask. The, the yellow white part. Yeah. So she just mixed a little bit of the white with the yellow and then just put it on the very edge of her palette knife and then serrates it along the bottom of what you painted there. So it's kind of just um, where the water is lapping up on the, on the shore. My paint is... my. Tape is coming out in little tiny, teeny tiny strips. It's probably a very time consuming thing here. How, how do you, everybody do with the water reflections? I think that really adds a lot to the picture. It really does. It's, it's surprising how those little white horizontal lines can add so much. Sometimes it's the smallest little strokes you put in that add the that little pizzazz to your painting. I almost got this all the way done. Are there any questions, Wendy? Anybody have any other questions? Somebody was asking a question about the horizon line again, the original. Um, white and yellow horizon line, but I think, did you get, was that good enough, my little explanation, or do you want her to go over it? There, I'll okay. hold this up so you can see. We had, remember we had made that muted, that muted green kind of to give us the, the bush, the undergrowth down here. So then we just come in with our palette knife, which we had the white and the yellow, and we're just, we just kind of skip it across that horizon line. That's Another where the, the water is, it is, would be reflecting right up to the, where it hits the shore, you know. Pull off another piece. Hey, this one's coming off a little better. <laughs> I'm on my last side. You have a finished painting there to look at. I have a dear friend who is quite up there in years who loves the fall colors so much and she really can't get out much anymore to see them. So I am gifting her a painting.
Well, I'm trying to get off my last corner of paint tape. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> Wendy? Yeah. How can I get to the recording when this is done? So I, somebody else was asking too that came in late. So what I will do is I usually, um, it takes a while for it to load 